Hey everybody, Sean's back again to show you a aftermarket backup camera installation today. In this one, this is a mirror that basically has a TV behind it to show you an image of a camera that attaches to your license plate back bracket. Um, my first impressions, the mirror looks awesome. Um, I, first thing I did, I got it out of the box and made sure that it would connect to my mirror in my car pretty good and um, not give me any any kind of image that would be funny or driving me nuts while I try to drive during normal day operations. So anyways, the mirror's got a plastic back, um, pretty well built. I mean, it's got three buttons here. This gets into a mode where you could adjust the brightness, the contrast, and all that kind of stuff. Um, these clips are pretty much my only issue with the camera. Um, the video, sorry, or the mirror, whatever you want to call it. The top, they're fixed in position. Um, they're not thin, but if they ever did break off from being brittle or something, I'm not sure if you could repair it. But this thing's cheap enough. I, I got it for, I think, $36 at a door. And the way that it attaches to your mirror these guys are spring loaded and they stretch down a good amount and the spring is super tight so when I go to put it on the mirror I gotta make sure that I put it on nice and slow and don't break these things off because if you break these two tabs there's no way of securing this to your mirror unless you use a bunch of double stick tape or something. Now the mirror itself if I hold it at a certain angle you can see the, um, the video behind it. Um, normal conditions when you're in a dark car you could barely see it so for the trade-off that that gives you I think it implements the video system really really nicely uh, other impressions so here's the camera and as I said it hooks up to your license plate screws as normal it's got an adjustment here it's pretty hard to turn I don't know if I can do it with one hand but anyway that'll get you the angle that you need uh, it's got a little plastic cover over it I believe these are infrared LEDs so it should light up at night. Those connectors, you have an RCA that hooks up to it and a power connector. Here's the power connector. It's got a positive and a negative on it. Another one, positive and negative. And then your RCA cable. This has got a positive going through the whole entire cable. So I'll show you how to hook it up in a moment. But then you have the mirror, which basically you have the power adapter in red. You have the RCA cable in yellow. And then if you wanted to alternatively use this for something else, whether it be a DVD player or anything with an RCA hookup, you can hook it up to this. Now, the installation I'm going to talk about today does not wire it so you could use this. The difference is, is you have to find a separate power source for the mirror so you could switch it on with any other device. Anywho, it comes with this uh, little instruction manual and it's got some instructions on the box itself. The reason why I say I'm not going to use this manual today and hook it up first is because uh, the words. It's, it's a Chinese part. It hasn't gone through much quality testing, I'm sure, or the instruction writing. But um, to give an example, display connection description. If the monitor is only used for reversing camera can be connected, power line red positive can be connected with the small red line 6 meter video line connector side because the other end of red line line and reversing lamp for automobile is connected so that when reversing reversing lamp can to display power supply. Yeah. My only other gripe with this so far is that these power connectors are very, very thin. So it might be a little bit difficult to connect things and strip it out. But once you get it installed correctly, secure it to something, whether it be tape it to something or tie strap it because being that the wire is so small, it's going to become fragile. You don't want shaking around in the vehicle to break your wire and you have to take apart everything else. But anyways, here is the installation. This is how you wire it for only the backup camera. It's really, really easy. So basically, your wire harness comes out of here. 
and your RCA cable hooks up uh, the video side right here and as I said it's got a power wire that connects to the RCA cable the power wire connects back into this um, but all you gotta do since you have power running through the RCA cable you just connect this right here and then you tape it off so that side is fine this is the ground wire you have to find a ground source so on the mirror side really all you gotta do is hook up this RCA cable hook up this harness for the power cable tie these together on the uh, red power side and then find a ground so it's as simple as that then you do your RCA run on the other side of the RCA there's the other side of the power cable I'll talk about that in a minute that plugs into the camera harness for the RCA and then on the other side you have the power harness and then the, um, the power wire itself that's got the black and the red. So the black is your ground. You gotta find a ground for that. And then the reds you connect with the RCA and the power harness. Now you have to supply power into it right here on this side. So now you basically tap these guys into your reverse light on the positive side. So when you put the car in reverse, the power goes into the light bulb. It lights up the light bulb. It supplies power through here. It powers up your camera, and then it powers up your screen at the same time. When you come out of reverse, everything will shut down. You'll have your um, your mirror back to normal. But it only takes up this much space. So if you actually had to still use the mirror to back up, you have this, and you have this. Of course, turn your head. But, anywho, that's about it for the installation. And now um, we'll show you the um, the testing of this and how it actually looks. Okay, now what I did here is hooked up all the wiring. Um, this is nothing but uh, an electronics box where I have a variable power supply. Um, it's rigged up so I basically have a couple posts that I could hook everything into. It's real nice to test stuff like this. Here's the camera. You can move that up and down. Note that I still got the, the plastic part on there, so it should be a little bit blurry, but you'll see it's not that bad. This is the RCA cable. Basically what happens is this harness right here, uh, it's got the RCA hookup. The RCA cable's actually got a pow positive power wire running all the way through it. So what you can do is you hook this up to your reverse light switch. So as soon as you put the car in reverse, it powers that wire up. So you get power to the camera and you get power through the RCA. That comes out to the end of the RCA and then you can hook up the power from the mirror or the, um, the video if you want to call it that, to the RCA cable. Therefore, you never have to tap into a power source for the mirror itself. Now, a wire that's hiding behind here is this white wire. If you wanted to use that for something alternate, then you have to power it up somehow to turn on the power in the mirror. But, um, yeah, if you're just doing the backup camera, no big deal. It's real simple installation. should just be basically finding a nice ground source for this side of it and a nice ground source for this side of it and a positive lead goes to your reverse light switch no big deal so anyways here's the mirror as you can see it looks just like a mirror no big deal um, I'm gonna leave it at that angle because what I want you to see is that line right there and that line right there it's basically a two-way mirror so you have the video behind here um, not bad at all though, I mean you could barely see it. The first thing I did when I got this in the mail is I put it in the car to make sure that I could drive with this thing and not have any kind of normal day issues trying to um, to see cars behind me or anything like that. And it was perfectly okay, it was a little different but nothing big. So, anywho, um, there's the camera, it's all hooked up. When I flip on the switch you'll see the power on this come on. Uh, I'm not going to focus on that. I'll put it on this so you can see it turn on. But basically what you want to pay attention to is the video pops up. One, two, three. Boom. There it is. So this power source, one thing that I don't like about it is that it's a dirty power source. So I'm going to try to come in a little closer and focus in to show you. Okay. Pretty much got the image. 
might be the best that I could do. But anyway, I'm going to move the camera around so you can see what it's doing. So you see those lines up there? If I just change the, uh, the power on this, you'll see those lines move away a little bit. So, basically, it's pretty awesome. I mean, you have your backup lines right there. They're not going to move with your steering like uh, the cars that come with this stuff. But it's a simple guide once you get it tuned in your head, I guess. But the camera's right there. And um, as you can see, I mean, it's operating as advertised. So I'm really excited to install it. It should be easy as can be. The hardest part of this installation, I think, is going to be running this RTA cable and um, running the wires from this camera from the outside of the vehicle to inside of the vehicle and keeping it waterproof. That's going to be the biggest challenge. So anyways, this is, when I power it down, it's going to act like your reverse lights come off. So putting it back in drive or park or whatever. And that's one, two, three. So, simple as that. Next step is to really put some thought into how you're going to do this insulation. Because that's really going to matter for how you run the wires and everything. <clears throat> so being that this camera is going to mount right up here to the top of the plate, I'm going to have only that much room to wire it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, how long it is. So it's not long. My reverse light is over here. So what that means is that if I open this up, you can see that the reverse light is separate on this vehicle. I'm going to have to get the wires to there. So, at the end of this harness, where the power hooks up, this power wire that isn't really the longest, it's probably about three or four feet length, that will have to go from this reverse light all the way up this path through this connector, coming through here into the back of the tailgate and then right about somewhere over here. Now the wires on that camera might go through to somewhere about here, but this connector is definitely not going to be long enough to attach to the reverse light. So what I'm going to do, I'm probably going to run it as close as I can to up here, but um, I'm probably going to have to have an extension just solely for that red power wire to hook up to the reverse light. So maybe what the best plan of action is, is to first take apart the light, find the wire that I need, and run a separate wire up through here, and maybe all the way through here and down into the back of the tailgate. That way I don't have to worry about the distance on the camera wires or anything like that. So then, after I do that, the RCA cable that's going to hook up to that yellow part, picture it coming out through here. I'm going to have to run the RCA cable down into the tailgate here through this connect, um, rubber connector cover, whatever you want to call it. And then at that point, I could run it through the whole headliner out to the front of the vehicle. And to do that, it's fairly easy because you could probably just pop it down and just run it sideways there. Just wanted to stop here and just show you the progress. So, this is the reverse light on the Ford Escape. This is a 2009 model. <clears throat> what I did was disconnect the harness. I tested the leads with the multimeter to make sure that I do have 12 volts on one of those wires. The wire that does is this greenish, bluish colored wire. So I went ahead and split up the harness, the covering on the harness to this point. What I'm going to do is tap a wire into here. And I'm going to run it through this rubber boot that I pulled back a little bit. Then I'm going to go on the inside of the vehicle and fish that wire up, up, up through there. And hopefully back into the tailgate. This is how I tapped into the harness. I used one of these quick connector clamp styles. I do warn you, so this is the back of the vehicle. You could actually see down to the ground from there. 
if you use one of these and don't solder, solder is always my first choice, tape this up as best as you can. If you don't think water is going to get in there, you're wrong. Um, once you expose the wire to the atmosphere, basically it starts the corrosion process. So whatever you could do to protect that, tape it up, um, basically secure it up so all of a sudden your reverse light just does not go out because it just rusted over the whole internal part of the wire. That goes to say for anything that you do on the outside of the vehicle. I went ahead and fished the wire all the way up to this part. As you can see it's coming out of here and then I have it going up here. It's going to be another challenge to get it through the body but um, something like a hanger or a spoke of a bicycle tire helps it to where you could fish this through and then pull the wire right back through. The one problem that I did not think of before that might be a hassle and I'm up to do that next is trying to fit this RCA cable through as well as the other harnesses that are in here. Um, if it doesn't work out I wonder if I should just tape it all up and then maybe coat it with some kind of light grease to slip it through. That might be the best way. Well, I'm a little bummed out. So I'm not sure if this happened before, but I dropped the camera twice. And uh, as you can see, there's cracks all on the bottom right there underneath the plastic. <clears throat> only dropped it from about two, three feet up off of the back of the tailgate of the escape and that happened. Anyway, it doesn't look like it's going to obstruct the lens. I'm going to continue to install with this, but um, now I'm starting to think that I better run these wires so I can replace this if I wanted to or needed to. So anywho, <clears throat> to give an update, these wires I went ahead and finished running. Let me see if I can get a better focus on that. It's a little bit of a task to try to fish it through this rubber piece. Uh, what I did was tape it up and put some olive oil on it and then pulled it through and then pushed it from the other side with that spoke. And then uh, fished it through here, made a little rig where it's a um, drain clog tool, this plastic piece. And I taped up a spoke from a bicycle rim to it. Came in very very handy or perfect and I have the plastic off of the back of the tailgate and trying to figure out how I'm going to do this so if I pull this down you can see on the back of the escape there are two lights for the night light that shines on the license plate and then there is the button switch what I think I'm going to do is try to take out that button switch if it's easy and see if I could cut a little hole and then maybe put some silicone on it when I'm done. I think that'll be the easiest way to replace it and the easiest way to run it. So, up inside here, I see these two bolts right here. I'm not sure if they release the Ford logo or if they um, release that switch. So I'm going to give that a shot, take those off and see what it does. Okay, I got that piece off. <clears throat> so. To note, these plastic pieces on that back section, the trim piece, are very fragile. So these kind of sliced open a little bit. Otherwise, there's one, two, three, four, five, oh sorry, one, two, three, four clips, and then one, two, three, four bolts. I didn't see these two, and then I think because I didn't pry it from the other side first, I, uh, I'm going to pay the consequences later, so to say. But anyway. The whole trim piece comes off just like this. And um, on the back side of this, what I'm going to end up doing is probably cutting a slice right here for that wiring harness to go through, and then I can fish it through everything else. So it won't take much. This is just plastic, so I'll just get some kind of tool to take a slice into that. That's it. Okay. Tool of choice. This butane pen with a plastic cutter on the end. Just let it sit on the edge right there and give me a little notch. So you can see right there. So essentially what's going to happen 
this is going to be right underneath the um, this trim piece. And that wire is just going to go up right through there and against the body. So as you can see, that fits in really nice. And then I'll just press it in and keep things good. So, looks like it's going to be a nice install. There's one more thing that I forgot to mention. The pass-through to the vehicle for those wires, the only place to do it without adding another grommet is going to be using this grommet. Now this one is tight as can be. There's no way I could stretch this to get any of those RCA cables through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that tool again and I'm going to notch the grommet. Not really the best idea, but it's pretty much what I have to work with right now. So that's going to have to do. Here's a quick shot of the trim panel. And as you can see, the, um, the wires are going to fit in that little groove just like that. And the grommet that I sliced a little bit, oh, out of focus, maybe a little better. You can see how it's notched in there and the wire runs through there. Now the wire runs into the back of the cab just like that. So I'm going to snap it all back together and then uh, just clean up the plastics, put that back together. And the last part is making that run up to the front. The last step before I plugged everything together was to get the power harness in and then ground it. So I went ahead and tied the ground to there. It's not the best ground, but I think it'll work. Then I secured everything, like I said. Make sure you get tape everywhere you can and just protect it. You don't want to hear it vibrate or anything like that. So the harness is mounted up here. Everything's run. I'm going to put back on the plastics. I put the harness back together over here so it looks real clean and uh, I think that's it for back here okay so here's a shot of the final installation on the back as you can see well it's hard to see but the wire is going right up through here into the back this was really clean looks pretty good for the installation I'm happy with it so, I got the mirror installed I got the wiring done basically all I had to do is connect that RCA connector to a positive source uh, on the wiring harness and then I needed to ground it just like in the back so the mirror is mounted to the stock mirror you can see it looks pretty good and here we go so I hit reverse Boom, there's my image. It's awesome. It, uh, it's exactly what I hoped for. Okay, so the installation is complete. I think it looks excellent. It's totally integrated into the mirror. The wires are all hidden. I'm gonna problem focusing. There we go. Here's a shot of the end. Interior. I have the flashlight out, so I'm hoping this picture comes up nice. But you can see the gap in between the mirror and the clip-on mirror. It came out pretty good. I mean, it's pretty seamless from the inside. If I actually shine the flashlight on it, you may be able to see the screen through the clear glass. Um, my thoughts about the mirror, I really don't notice too much of a difference uh, during the day when I'm driving. It's a little bit more tinted, so to say, than um, the stock mirror. But other than that, it, um, it works flawlessly. I mean, half of my shots, you probably saw the glare just coming from the back. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Got the wires running up through the headliner and they go over this way. I still have the handle off. I lost the socket so I'm trying to find that. But then it runs into the back. It's as simple as that. So really, really clean. I love it. For the price, you can't beat it, I don't think. And um, the quality of the camera seems pretty darn good. I mean, as far as the visual. <laughs> But the plastic already cracked, so I can't say much about that. I don't see the crack in the in the um, the display, though. 
but I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. So let me see if I can focus and now put it in reverse. Let's see. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm in reverse, headed toward a curb. Sorry for the shaky hand. It gives no beeps, no warnings, or anything like that, but it's solely a camera. For the price, you can't beat it. I still haven't adjusted the settings as far as color, tint, contrast, brightness, etc., 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 but hands down, by far, one of the best deals that I've ever had. It's a little rainy out and dark out, so you'd be able to see this shot better than yesterday's. But there's the mirror, and I'm going to go ahead and put it in reverse. There's the image. I'll zoom in and focus. There you go. Nice clear picture as you can see. Okay, I wanted to get some footage for you guys at night. Now, there's a light in front of me, but there's absolutely no lights behind me, so I'm putting it in reverse now. Let's get this in focus. It's raining out and a little bit chilly, so you see a little bit of smoke on there. But what you see is the glare of the bike rack, not a crack on the lens as before. But as you can see, I'm pulling backwards. There's some woods behind me, and they're glowing like a champ. That's because of the infrared lights that are on the uh, camera. If this helps you out, helps you make a decision, helps you with the installation, whatever it may be, give me a thumbs up. Alright guys, have a great one.